So let's turn our Bibles to Numbers chapter 13. And I'm going to be talking about my case is different. My case is different. Numbers chapter 13. There's so much to read, but I'm going to give you just a little introduction about it. In Numbers 13, God had spoken to Moses and told Moses and said, choose the leaders of every tribe and let them go into the land you're going to go into and let them just see what the land is like. And, you know, I believe that what God wanted to do was to inspire them to fight and to believe for the future. And that's what God does. Through his words, he begins to paint picture in our heart so that you can believe for something that is very powerful. And when this man went and saw and came back, you know, instead of them to come back and see through the eye of faith, they began to see through the eye of fear. And let me say something to you. In your Christian work, your mentality matters. Your mentality matters. There is a mentality that is based on faith. There is a mentality that is based on fear. There's a mentality that is based on faith that is so positive. There's a mentality that is based on fear that is so negative. And let me say, this is how you know. People see the same thing but have two different kind of result and response. Some people see something and it results into fear. Some people see something and it results into faith. Everybody saw Goliath. And when they saw Goliath, they ran away. When David saw Goliath, he ran towards Goliath. The reason why was this. His mentality was based on faith, but their mentality was based on fear. The question today is this. With all that is going on around you what mentality do you have you know why until your mentality is different your actions will not be different if you are going to have a different kind of result then your mentality must be different why different mentality will produce a different response a different response will produce what different kind of result hallelujah so if others are falling on my right and on my life uh, on my left and in the center you know what the bible says to me he says only with my eyes will i see and behold the reward of the weekend he said no evil shall come near me you know why because my case is different my case is different don't commonize me with other people don't think i'm among the populace hey my case is different somebody say hallelujah hallelujah let's read in the word of god numbers chapter 13 in verse 27 they had gone to see the land this was their report the bible says and they told him and said they told moses and said we came onto the land surely with that center, surely it flowed with milk and honey. And this is the fruit thereof. Nevertheless, the people that be that dwell in the land, they are the people that sorry, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of the Anak, that means the giant like, like human beings there, and the Amalekite dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittite and the Jebusite and the Amorite dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanite dwell by the sea but, and by the coast of the, of the Jordan. That's what some people said. See, they all saw the same thing, but this was their response. Verse 30. This, that was response based on fear. That was response based on negativity. That was how they were thinking. Look at what Caleb said. The Bible says all of a sudden Caleb stood up and Caleb stilled the people. Hallelujah. Before Moses. He says, let's go up at once and possess it. Hallelujah. How come? He says, for we are well able. How did he? He says, we are well able to overcome it. How come? Some men says we cannot overcome it. This man says we can overcome it. The reason why is this. Although they saw the same thing, their mental spirit premise was actually different someone's mental premise was based on faith he was based on the consciousness that god is with us he was based on the consciousness that god has spoken to us he was based on the consciousness that god has given us the city the other person's consciousness and mentality was based on fear what they saw what they heard the things they felt they said this he said the land is wonderful but the people inside they are huge the walls are you know the, the walls are huge they are strong people the question today is this with all that is going on around in the world what are you basing your life on hey, listen to me when you're full of faith your mentality is going to reflect that positivity that comes from faith. It's going to reflect that abundance thinking that comes from faith. But when you're full of fear, your life is going to reflect that negativity that I don't know if it's going to work, I don't know if it's going to be possible, and all of those kind of things. See what the Bible says here. This is very powerful. 
The Bible says, and they brought up an evil report of the land, and the search on t- which they had searched unto the children of Israel, the land through which they had gone to search. It is a land that eat it. See how they describe the land. They said the land which was searched is a land that eats up the inhabitants, and all the people we saw in it are of a great stature. Did you see that? This is this is this this is so powerful. You know why? Fear is a mentality. Fear stays in people and becomes a mentality. Not only does it become a mentality, fear also becomes a perspective. The truth is this. There's no way, there's no land in this earth that eats up its inhabitants. After all, you saw people there. And there's no land in this world that everybody is a giant. That is impossible. But that is what they began to say because they began to look from the point of fear. The Bible says in verse 33, And when we saw the giant, the sons of Anak, which came out of the giants, see what the Bible says. It says, We were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so were we in their sight. Watch this now, their mentality. In our own sight, we were grasshoppers. Some of you are sitting down there and thinking, I'm a victim because, you know, I've not been able to make the money I need to make. Oh, look at how this has just killed my life. And you have this victim mentality. The more you think like a victim, the more others see you as a victim. Some of you are sitting there and saying, oh, who's going to marry me? And, you know, how is my life going to be like this? My life is just upside down. And the more you see yourself that way, the more others see themselves that way. But Caleb and Joshua did not see themselves the way others saw them. They saw the same thing. They saw the same attack. But the response was categorically different because their mentality was different. One person moved from the paradigm of faith. Another person moved from the paradigm of what? Of fear. Somebody say hallelujah. In tough times, you must realize that what will see you going through is the power of of your faith, the power of your faith. So there are two key par- paradigms or men- mentality. There's a mentality that is based on fear and there's a mentality based on fear. How do you know you have a mentality based on fear? When you have a mentality based on fear, two key things manifest. Number one is the negativity. You look like life and you're so negative about life. You go like, you know, will, will my child succeed? We will make it through this phase. Am I sure I've not lost everything forever? You know, am I sure that life is not going to come to an end? I'm so scared. I'm so worried. Maybe I'm going to become sick. I don't know why I feel nosy this morning. Maybe I'm sick already. And you look from a place of negativity. That shows you are working on the paradigm of fear. The second thing is this. When you're working on the paradigm of fear... You begin to think of scarcity. You begin to think of, oh my God, it's not going to be enough. We have to just prepare the worst is to come because that's what fear does. Fear helps you, keeps you informed that the worst is ahead of you and the best is behind you. Faith doesn't say that. Hallelujah. Because the same way fear is a perspective, faith is actually superior perspective. I love the way the Bible says it in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 in verse 7. He says, we walk by faith and not by sight. Meaning that the same way our sight guides our thinking, the same way our sight provides basic information for uh, for our thinking and processing. He says, faith is also another kind of sight. Meaning in that faith is a perspective. So I see what is happening, but my interpretation of what is happening is an interpretation that is totally influenced from the standpoint of faith. I understand that people are losing money, but the scripture says in Job 22 verse 29, he said when men say there's a cast down, he says I will say there's a lifting up. The Bible says clearly, he says the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the house of the righteous. Someone says, how can you believe that? Because my case is different. I'm not of the fear people. I'm of the faith people. Other people say we cannot do it. Other people say it is over. Other people say this is the worst crisis in the entire world history. But guess what? The people of faith do not say that. What does faith say? Faith says whatsoever is born of God. He overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Either you are sitting on your couch or you've been in the house for such a long time or things have gone so bad or you're heading towards a divorce faith says that your tomorrow can be better he says if you have hope in God and God can be on your side it's going to turn into a full-blown testimony say amen glory to God 
chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. So faith is a perspective. Faith is a, see, when you're in faith, this is what you need to know. Fear and faith is the same thing. But the response is different because you are going to operate from the premise of your mentality. So, on the premise of fear, you're going to, oh, you know, but on the premise of faith, you see something else. Glory to God. So, when Caleb and Joshua, their response was different, it's not as though they did not see the recession. They did not see the opposition. They did not see the challenges. But the point is this. Although they saw the challenges, they processed the challenges from the perspective of faith. It, I'm not saying you should deny the fact that things have gone so wrong, that time has been lost, that there's no capital, that your marriage has an issue, that you have a marital delay. But I'm only saying that can you begin to process that from the point of what? Of faith. When the Lord came to Martha, he said, hey, will you roll away the stone? Ma Ma Mary and Martha said, oh my God. He to begin to think because that's fear. Fear, fear says it's over, it's done, nothing can change. Faith says, uh-uh. If you would believe, you will see the glory of God. Faith says it can always get better. It can always go forward. God's power can be manifested. Faith can be changed. Someone say hallelujah. Why faith leads to positive kind of thinking? You know, let me put it this way. Why faith will lead to positive mentality? Faith will lead you to abundance kind of thinking. In this season, many people are withholding back. Everybody preparing for the worst. Listen to me. I'm not preparing for the worst. I'm preparing myself. I'm preparing because things are going to get better. Hallelujah. That's my thinking. Things are going to get better. Listen, people say it's going to last for such a long time, but things are going to get better. It's, how do I know that? The Bible says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with you. You will not die as a woman without a child. You will not end up as a single girl without a husband. Husband, you will not end up with a folded up company. All the money that is lost was still going to come back. That is a perspective of faith. Why fear things of scarcity? It's going to get worse. It's going to get terrible. And this and that. Faith says no. If I would believe all things are possible to him that believeth. I believe that no evil shall come near me. Praise God. And no plague shall come near my dwelling place. I believe that. Do you know what I believe? Psalm 91. That with long life will it satisfy me. My life will not be cut shot in the middle. Hallelujah. That the days out on earth will be fulfilled. When it's time to die, I will not die with a virus. When it's time to die, I will not die on a hospital bed. I will lay down in my bed, having fulfilled purpose, having fulfilled dream, having fulfilled God's plan for my life, and say, look up into heaven and say, Father, here I come. And that is it. If you believe, say amen, somebody. Glory to God. What does fear do? Four things that fear does to you. Number one, fear has the way of exaggerating your challenges. They, they said to themselves, they said, oh, wow. Everyone was saw was a giant. He said, this place, he said, the land, it's, it's inhabitants. Listen, when you are in fear, you exaggerate your challenge. Oh, my God. The, the way I feel, am I not, am I not sick? Oh, were well, the things going on in the economy, can I still hit my goals? Do you know right now in the, in the economy, some people are making a killer amount of money. Fear, exactly. The second thing that fear does is this. Fear limits your potentials. They could overcome those that stayed in that land. But fear has a way to tell you that you cannot do it. There are many of you that the dream in your heart is a global dream. With an international head office in Singapore. With another branch head office in New York. And you know, you've limited yourself to a place of safety. You can play safe and be in faith. Hallelujah. You can play safe and be in faith. The exact concept of faith is a concept of courage and concept of risk. That's the exact concept of faith. And if we're a people of faith and we believe the word of God. You know what you should be saying? You say, I can take risk because I know that God is backing me. If you are not taking risk, you need to ask yourself. So, do I believe that God is behind me? This is what David said. David said, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I'm going to take some huge risk. Not because I'm a spot person. He said, the reason why I don't even bother if I blow it or not is this. He says that thou art with me. That means your divine presence is an insurance and assurance that if things go wrong, you can correct it. Somebody say hallelujah. That's really powerful. That's really powerful. Fear exaggerates your challenges. Fear limits your potential. Your fear will say, hey, you can do this. There are many of you that have ideas. You just talk. Right now you're feeling, have you noticed every time you feel the fear, you just become stuck. Even your mind stops working. 
And the reason why, is not because you don't have time. Because fear limits potential. The third thing that fear will do to you is this. Fear will define you. My God. Do you know there are people that are known for fear? It defines who you are. Read through the Bible, you find people known for fear. I want to ask you, when you are about 70, 80, 90 years old, and your kids and grandkids want to talk about you, will they talk about grandmother or grandfather that is full of faith, or grandmother or grandfather that is full of fear? When you read the story of Hebrews chapter 11, we have a catalog of people that fear did not define them, that their faith defined them. The Bible says, time will fail us to talk of Gideon or Barak, who through faith subdued kingdom. They shut the mounts of liars. They wrought righteousness. Praise God. What are they going to say about you? In very difficult time, listen to me, our fear is not what defines us, it's our faith that defines us. And when you claim you have faith, faith shines brightest when it's toughest. Faith shines brightest when it's toughest because faith is a way by itself. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. And you know something about faith? fear? Fear is highly contagious. Did you notice as soon as they began to talk about all those things, everybody just got scary, everybody just got afraid? You need to rise above. If, 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 you're going to, if you're going to do something great, you know, that, that's about fear. What about faith? Because faith is a mentality. What, what does faith look like? The reason why is this. I'm saying this to you. Number one, if, if, if you always exaggerate your challenges, you're living in fear. If you are always letting your challenge stop you from what you need to do, fear is there. The other thing is this. If you find yourself just limited in your thinking, that's an evidence of fear. The, the other thing is this, when you have fear, you undervalue who you are and what you can do. If you find yourself always undermining who you are, you say, well, I'm not a great ma woman. Who is going to marry me? You know, how can I make money in this economy? Things are going to go worse. That's fear. If you always have a negative outlook on life, oh, there's no money. Things are going to go worse. That's fear right there. And it's time for you to switch off the fear switch and switch on to faith. When you have faith, what does it look like? <laughs> faith people never play safe. Hallelujah. You know why? They never play safe because they know I will win anyway. So why play safe? So because I know I will win, I can take some risk. When last did you take a risk? If you're always playing faith safe, you're playing to fear. What does faith people... And listen to me. How do you know you're in, in faith? Because... When you are in faith, you would be taking risk because you understand you cannot succeed without risk. Not only can you not succeed without risk, you cannot grow without risk. Your risk capacity will limit your success. Your risk capacity will limit your success. So if you're in faith, you are thinking positive, you are taking huge risk. This is the season where... A lot of people are holding back. But guess what? This is a season where the world needs help. People need help on the right. People need help on the left. This is not the time for us to withhold what we have. This is the time for us to be sowing seed. This is the time to call someone and sow encouragement. And sow some prayers. And help people in Italy. And help people. And, and you know, giving our tithe and giving our offering. And ask and say, what can we do as a church to provide food for people? What can we do as a church, you know, to help people that are stranded? What can we do as a church to help that expensive recession? Because everyone seems to be experiencing something. People that have fear cannot think that way because they're already afraid that it will not be enough. They're already afraid that they're in trouble so they can't help other people. People that have faith are saying that, praise God, better days are ahead of me. I can do something to help someone. The question is, are you living in fear of faith? You know, when I read the story of Jesus, how he multiplied the bread, and the Bible says he took a, child, a child's lunch, what I asked myself was this. Really? In that meeting that had about 10 or 20,000 people, it was only one young boy that brought lunch for the meeting? What about all the wealthy men that, bought their, that came on their cattle? Did he bring lunch? No. Every, most of them brought food, or some of them brought food. But it was only the young boy that had faith enough to trust. If I release what I have to God, it will be a blessing to other people, and I will not go back hungry. 
Fear says, if you release what you have to God, you will die of hunger. Faith says, if you release what you have to God, it will bless people all over the place. And guess what? It will also come back and bless you. Let's just a question. When they finished feeding the 5,000 and there were baskets of food left behind, let me ask you, what do you think owned it? It could be nobody else except the young boy. The reason why was this. It was one that gave him the raw materials to transform the miracles. He was a legal owner to all those loaves of bread. Question, are you living in faith? Has your faith made you so selfish and self-centered? And I'm saying so because in the time of crisis, one of the things that the devil wants you to do is, is number one, to give up on your dreams, to narrow your dreams. The other thing he also wants you to do is to enter into a mode of self-preservation. That's the same, self-preservation, where you're like, you know, you're like, I'm just thinking of myself and, and survival. And listen, once you enter into self-preservation and survival, prosperity and advancement is far from you. And that's why next week, you need to tune in next week Sunday. I'm going to be talking about going, see, I'm, I'm going to talk about going faster, going faster against odds. Growing despite the odds, sir. Huh. The Bible says there was famine in the land and Isaac sold in that land. The Bible says really hundredfold in that year. You know what? Because it's what you believe you see. Faith says best things are about to happen. Fear says the worst is about to happen. What premise, what, what premise are you living on? Hallelujah. Faith sees opportunities. Faith sees opportunity. Everybody saw Goliath running from Goliath. David ran to us. He saw opportunity. Faith sees the unseen. Joshua and Caleb. You know, let, let me read. Hallelujah. Faith sees the unseen. Let, let, let's read number chapter 14. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's time to see the unseen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says. Mm. Hey, hey, hey. The Bible says this. Verse 6. When the people had said all their news, all the Israelites said, let's go back to Egypt. Look at what Joshua said. Verse 6. Numbers 14, verse 6. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephthah, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto the, and they spake to all the company of the children of Israel, saying, the land which we passed to search it, it is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will give unto us this land and give it, and it will bring us unto this land and give it unto us. It is, see, see, see what they were saying. They say, all we have to bother is that God is involved with us. That's the perspective of faith. But that's what I'm going to. He says, and bring us into a land that floweth with milk and honey. He says, only rebel not ye against the Lord. <laughs> he says, only rebel not ye against the Lord. He says, walk with God. Every time you stay in faith, you rebel against God. He said, walk with God. Praise God. Don't live in fear. Walk with God. What is God putting your heart to do? Do it. Hallelujah. Dream about that business. Dream about that season. Dream. Dream about what you can do. How much you can give. Dream about what can happen to your business. Dream. Don't rebel against the Lord. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at it. Look at it. He says, neither. So, the unseen is this. He says, neither fear ye the people. Huh? Why should you not fear them? Why? Number one, he says, for they are bread to us. Montakes uh Uh-uh. Other people said these were giants. Other people said these were huge people. Joshua looked at them. Hallelujah. And he saw the unseen. He said, you can see their six pack. You can see the armory. You can see the soldiers. You can see the wall. But see through the spirit. They are bread to us. Hallelujah. What can you see in your spirit? That they are bread to us. Hey. He said, look at the next line. This is huge. He said, their defense is departed from them. Uh-huh. Why? He said, for the Lord is with us. Fear them not. How did, question, how did Joshua know that the defense was departed? The reason why was he had seen something. Praise God. Faith sees the unseen. When you look at the current situation, how do you see? Do you see the reports on CNN? Do you see the report on BBC? Do you see hear what they say on the news? And you're following NCDC. Or what are you seeing? Are you seeing from the perspective of faith? Hey, what did Joshua say? Joshua said what others could not see. He said, number one, they are bread for us. Ah, uh -huh. what does that mean? This situation is for my opportunity. Something, what do you mean? All things work together for good, either good or bad. 
Hallelujah. All things work together for good. It's working for my good. What, I love what David and um, what Joseph said. He said, what, the, he said, what you taught for evil. He said, God turned it around for my good. Praise God. He said, the second thing is this. He said, their defense. Because when you look at the land naturally, nothing had changed. He said, but their defense is departed from them. Why? Because faith sees the unseen. Faith sees the unseen. So, when I say that my case is different, what am I saying? I'm saying that because I'm a man of faith, what happens to other people is not my portion. Because I work from another locus. I work from another orientation. My origin is different. My life is different. My revelation is different. Hey, how the people said that was difficult. Joshua said, uh-uh, it's not difficult to me because I'm different. Praise God. My case is different. All people may die early. That's not my case. My case is different. Others may lose their job. My case is different. Others may lose money. My case is different. Hallelujah. My case is different. Praise God. My case is different. Praise God. My case is different. Hallelujah. My case is different, people. Don't think that because others are having a divorce, it will happen to me. Don't think because others have no child, I will not have a child. Don't think because others get sick, I will get sick. Don't think because others contact a virus, I will contact a virus. No, sir. My case is different. Joshua helped them. Uh, he, he, he helped them to understand this. You know what? Unfortunately, Israel didn't get it. No, they didn't get it. So painful. So so painful. They even picked up stones to stone Joshua and Caleb. Guess what? Eventually, only two people made it to the promised land. Who was it? Joshua and Caleb. What fear would do? Is to rob you of your destiny. Why am I saying this to you? Someone says, okay, I'm catching on this. The reason why is that you must realize that your case is different. It, it, must, it must resound in your spirit. My case, say with me, say my case is different. Hey, my, my case is different. In my finance, my case is different. With my health, my case is different. With my, with my family, with my protection, with, with everything that concerns me, my case is different. I'm not like every other person. My case is this different. You know what the Bible says? You know, God said in the book of Exodus, he said, I'm going to distinguish between them that serve me and them that serve me not. And there were all these plagues that happened in Egypt. But in the land of Goshen that was in Egypt, it wasn't coming there because their case was different. That God has a way of distinguishing his people. So says, do you have some examples of people that their case were different? Of course, Isaac. Isaac's case was different. Bible says when there was a famine, Isaac sold in that land. He had a hundred foot return. Business people, this is not the time to cave in. Your case is different. This is the time to be aggressive. You are planning strategies, looking for new opportunities because your case is different. This is not the time to be overwhelmed and hopeless and say, how would I pay all the bills? No, sir. You say, what new opportunities have been unveiled to me? This is a time where we are sowing seed. This is a time where we are giving like never given before because our case is different. We are not operating from a fear perspective. We are operating from a faith perspective. Look at Israel. The angel of death was coming and killing all the firstborns. But when it came to the Israelite's house, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. You know why? Because that case is different. Everything can go wrong, but my case is different. The devaluation can affect everybody, but my case is different. My case is really different. Glory to God. My case is different. Look at Noah. Everybody was affected by the flood. Only Noah was not affected by the flood. Question, how, how, how do you come to a place where you realize that your case is different? You know, you come to that kind of place. The way you come to that kind of place is very simple. Hallelujah. It's a place of revelation. What's revelation? Ha. You go to 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. 1 John 5 verse 4. He says, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. He said, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Listen, I'm not trying to succeed. I'm an, I'm, I'm an overcomer. I'm not trying to do well. No, I did well before. The Bible says, blessed is the man. He said, blessed is the man. I'm the blessed man. I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bears his foot in season. Praise God. All things are working together for me. Praise God. You make it your mentality. Let me tell you. Let me challenge you what to do. You, you know, this is, this is the thing about Christianity. A lot of people... <laughs> They want to practice Christianity as if it's Tedisma. I say, my case is different, my case is different. Uh-uh, it doesn't work that way. For your case to be different, eh, you must walk on revelation. And revelation does not jump on you. You go for it. 
In this season, you will turn off, let me tell you something, you will turn off television, you will turn off radio. You'll bring out your Bible. You'll go to Harvester's Lucky TV, Harvester's TV on YouTube. You'll go to the messages and get your Bible and paper and begin to read the Bible as you are reading Revelation. There will be something that will leap out of the book and turn on your spirit. Once you cut it in the world, that's it. Listen, that revelation, you now allow it to sink inside. It begins to affect the way you think. All of a sudden, you just say, ah, oh my God, things are down for everybody. Say, things are down? What do you mean? You know why? Because all of a sudden, your inner reality are more real than what you can see. So there's no way you can say otherwise because you understand that your case is different. Let me tell you something. There are some of us that are operating under open heavens. There are some of us that have a grace cover. You know what a grace cover is? It's like holding an umbrella. When it's raining, 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 people under the umbrella see the rain, but it, don't, it doesn't come on them because there's a shield. There is a grace cover, but that grace cover is activated by revelation. Let me say something to you. The one that does not know he has something is the same thing with the one that doesn't have it at all. You can never take advantage of what you don't know. So the first step is this. You are going to get revelation. You are going to go as a businessman and write two or three scriptures that pertains to your health, pertains to your family, pertains to your prosperity. And every day you sit down and meditate on it. And meditate because you are trying to teach your mind what you want it to do. You are trying to teach your mind what you want to do. It's the power of revelation. You spend time in the word. How do you spend time with the world? See, I'm teaching on Sunday. Every morning I lead prayers. Join me for prayers. See him on Instagram. There, there are options on your screen. You can be like, I want to do a Bible study. I want to do something. Do something. If we belong to a small group on Zoom, gather together. You gather, you can gather and do a Bible study. And every morning when you wake up, just keep putting your faith there. Call your kids together. Put some faith in them. You will be surprised that everything will begin to change. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I speak over someone that in the name of Jesus Christ, that the exemption clause will be activated for you. I speak over someone today, that in the name of Jesus Christ, when men say there's a casting down, you will see there's a lifting up. I speak over someone that your life and economy will reflect the kingdom of God only, in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over someone today, that when men are contacting and saying all sorts for your case, there will be an exemption. In the name of Jesus Christ, people will look at you and begin to say, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. Because we all did the same thing, but we had different results. And you say, it's God. It's, it's Christ that is in me, that is the hope of glory. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, this is your season. Hallelujah. Every body that is under the sound of my voice I seek I command it to be healed in the name of your God I command healing to come to your body I command your body to be healed I command bones to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ I declare there's no body here that will come for your funeral there's no death that will come into your family in the name of Jesus Christ God will preserve you God will preserve your home God will bless you in this time where there is crisis it will be your biggest opportunity in the name of Jesus Christ I bless your spouse I bless your children I say the same blessing that rest upon you, rest upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ, on your behalf, I come against every work of Satan. I come against the manipulation of, manip manipulation of Satan and I say it has come to nothing in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we're praying. Amen.